Right, we're going to talk about now assets and bases that are used in our everyday lives. Now this is a whole bunch of situation how assets and bases are used uh, in terms of what we do in our everyday activities. Let's say if you have lots of good food and you have a tummy indigestion, like you go, oh, after you eat like food, you, you feel like, oh, I've got a bit of indigestion. Well, you, that means you have excess acids in your tummy. And what do you do? Well, you take tablets, antacids tablets, which are basically things that are, it's a tablet made of base, and when you dissolve it in water, it becomes an alkali, you drink it, and then the, base, the alkali will neutralize the acids and you feel much better relief, all right? Let's say if your bathroom has grime or your water kettle is a lot of grime, you know like when you boil it too many, one too many times, it starts having these white little things coating on top of the, uh, in the kettle or in the bathroom? Well, that's because it has excess lime in there, all right? So what do you do? You can use a natural remedy by pouring vinegar into your kettle and then rinse your kettle with vinegar or you can pour it in uh, the stuff that you have to grind in the bathroom and, and that helps, right? Because lime is basically a base and vinegar is an acid so it neutralizes and then you can wash it away. If you're growing plants or if you're a farmer or want to be a farmer, all right? Um, Plants requires a very specific pH in order to be healthy and, and, and grow big so that it can give us good food or grow big old fruits. Now if your soil is too acidic, which is very natural in, in industrial areas, we have a lot of acid rain, what you need to do is add a little bit of base into your soil. Chalk or limestone can do that. All right, so chalk and limestone is by basically base, and you can use that to not neutralize the acid in the soil. Now, why would you use an alkali? Well, number one, because alkali gets washed away when it rains. And number two, your soil will pH will go way above seven. All right, so it's not neutralizing the soil, but it's making the soil very basic, which is also not good for plant growth. Waste from factories, right? That means it has been discharged and it's acidifying the rivers and streams and lakes. What do we need to do? Well, before it gets discharged to the lakes and rivers and whatever you have you, you have a base in there in the discharge, before the discharge area, and basically you're neutralizing the acid base. All right, so there you go. Pictures of your kettle, uh, antacids that you put in your drinking water, acidic soil, the plant is sad, and factories discharge of waste. So acids and bases can be categorized into two types of acids and, base, uh, acids and bases. For acids, you have uh, strong acids and weak acids. Acids, when you are still strong, when inside water, the acids will completely dissociate. So that means all the ions will dissociate completely, all right? For weak acids, the ions, most of them, will stay together in its molecular form, but some of that will dissociate. So only some of it will break apart, all right? So when you look at it, I have an example of a strong acid. When you put strong acid in water, it will completely dissociate into its ions. So you have a H ion here and a Cl ion. This form, H3O plus, is called a hydronium. It's basically a hydrogen because you take H2O out of the equation, all you're left with is an H plus. So this is basically your hydrogen ion. All right, Hydrogen ions in real life do not exist as H plus. It has to be attached to something. And so it's attached to water to form a hydronium ion. So this is basically what it is. All right? In your IGCSE, all you care about is H plus. So in IGCSE, just write H plus. All right? So this is what you have, a complete dissociation. So the arrow points only to one direction. Vinegar is a weak acid. So I have vinegar here. You put it in water, it dissociates partially, right? But some of it, most of it will stay in this form, right? Some of it will dissociate 
like this. And it's a reversible reaction because most of it will some, well, some of it will dissociate and then form back into its uh, molecule. And then most of it will stay as a molecule, some of it will dissociate again and then revert back to its molecule. All right? Then we talk about bases. There's also two types of bases, strong base and a weak base. Um, bases, when put inside water, uh, will dissociate. If they dissociate, they become alkalized. So a strong base will also completely dissociate, and a weak base will partially dissociate. So bases. All right. So here I have examples of a base, a very strong base, sodium hydroxide, put in water. It breaks up into sodium and hydroxides. All right. This is the H plus. Don't worry about that. So it gives us the OH. That's a hydroxide. This is basic. What about a weak base? Ammonia with water forms ammonium and a hydroxide. This is base, and it's also partially dissociated. So most of it will stay as a gas, dissolved gas in water. All right. So that's our acids, bases, and salts. Next time we we'll talk about reactions of acids and bases with various types of chemical reactions. I mean, various types of chemical reactions, various chemical reactions involving acids and bases.